We humans have been fascinated with big animals for hundreds of years. These days, some standouts are the giraffe and the elephant. But hundreds of years ago, there were a lot more. A lot of continents would lose their megafauna. And today, we're going to look at Oceania to see if we can figure out where all its megafauna went. It's worth noting the types of megafauna that lived during this period. So, on Australia, you had snakes like Wamari narakurotisis, which was a 20 foot long snake, and possibly the largest bird to ever exist, the Dromornus strotoni, and also the Hesset's eagle and moa bird both found in New Zealand. You also had sheep-sized echidnas, a kangaroo that stood at somewhere between 7 to 10 feet, and the marsupial lion. And that's just scratching the surface. So what happened to all this diversity? Well, the normal ice age theory cannot be applied to Oceania because the glaciers never reached that far south. And actually, the glaciers benefited Oceania because of the drop in sea levels, the results of which was New Zealand increasing in surface area, hence why it looks so big on this map. Instead, the culprit lies with the after effect of the glaciers. As the glaciers retreated, they melted. This made the sea levels rise, and during this period of increased global temperatures, much of Australia began to dry out and become desert. This doesn't fully explain where all the megafauna went, because Papua New Guinea and New Zealand, and also the other regions of Australia unaffected by desert, were still able to support life. Thus, this has resulted in our second factor, humans, alongside the introduction of dingoes. As the Aboriginal people would cross from Papua New Guinea into Australia during this period, this would begin to place extra pressure on the wildlife. An example of this would be the replacement of the Tasmanian tiger as the main Aussie predator with the dingo, relegating these animals to the island for which they are named after. But what happened in New Zealand and Papua? Well, it's pretty much the same thing. Just later, with Papua New Guinea's megafauna, holding on in the highlands until some 20,000 years ago. And New Zealand's megafauna existed until the 13th century when the Maori journeyed to these islands. And the result of this is that in the modern day, there are no megafauna of the traditional definition left in Oceania. And thus, special consideration has to be made for these continents, increasing the weight from 100 kilograms to 40 kilograms for the classification of megafauna. Join us next time when we cross the Indian Ocean to Africa to find out what happened to megafauna in Africa.